powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Russ Reesinger. Montana's 66th legislature is underway and ahead of the 90 day marathon. There was some time for celebration. The first day, usually a relaxed event for new and returning lawmakers, and today was no different, at least for the first few hours. MTN reporter Mike Dennison spent opening day at the session Monday and gives us a look at what took place. Secretary of State Corey Stapleton gaveled the session to order shortly after noon in the Montana House chambers. Members elect of the House of Representatives of the 66th Legislature of the State of Montana, please come to order. But it wasn't just lawmakers on the floor. Family members often sit in as well, from young to old, to honor their loved one's first day as the people's representative. The newly elected 100 representatives in the House were sworn in and masked by Supreme Court Justice Jim Rice. Do solemnly swear that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Next, the House elects its top leader, the Speaker. That honor went to Republican Greg Hertz of Polson, who was escorted to the rostrum by his son, former State Representative Adam Hertz. Next, it's time for another tradition, informing the other branches of government that the House is open and ready for business. On this day, Republican Sue Vinton and Democrat Kathy Kelker, both from Billings, were chosen to inform Governor Bullock that lawmakers are ready to roll. It's a short walk down to the second floor to see the governor, but still, we thought we'd speed it up just a little. Sue Vinton. Welcome, absolutely, Representative. Good seeing you. Governor, Representative. to let you know that the House of Representatives is organized and ready for business. Fantastic. Look forward to working with you both. Great. And the you whole house. Well. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, but enough of the pleasantries. It's back to the floor of the House and time to let the other members know that the governor is ready for business. Mr. Speaker, the select committee reports that the governor has been notified that the House of Representatives is organized and ready for business. And with that, the business of politics at the session is off and running at the Capitol. Mike Dennison, MTN News. Well, let the sprint begin until the 90th day. Things will wrap up in early May. And down in Wyoming, the Cowboy State ushered in its new governor today. Mark Gordon, the former Wyoming State Treasurer, took the helm from term limited Matt Mead to lead the state. Gordon's son Spencer even built a custom podium for his dad. On the front, he engraved a picture of the Wyoming Capitol building. In the weeks leading up to his inauguration, Gordon worked to transition from treasurer to governor, but also helped the incoming treasurer learn the ropes. President Trump is taking steps to force an end to the partial government shutdown now in its third week. Tomorrow, Mr. Trump will address the nation about the need for a border wall in a primetime speech, his first since taking office. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. President Trump has decided to appeal to the public for his border wall amid ongoing negotiations to end the partial government shutdown. On Tuesday night, Mr. Trump will deliver a primetime speech from the Oval Office. In a tweet, the president said the topic would be, quote, the humanitarian and national security crisis on our southern border. Some Democrats denounced the address as a publicity stunt. I expect the president to lie to the American people. Why do we expect this? Because he has been lying to the American people. The president plans to visit the U.S.-Mexico border on Thursday and is demanding $5.7 billion to build 234 miles of wall. Over the weekend, the White House asked for another $7 billion for more immigration judges, border agents, medical supplies, and detention facilities. 17 days in and the effects of this shutdown are becoming more apparent, especially for the roughly 800,000 federal workers who aren't getting paid. We're bearing the brunt of this. We have nothing to do with it. It's like mom and dad fighting, and, and we're the kids that have nothing to do with it, but we're the ones that are feeling like we're in trouble. Over on Capitol Hill, the House convenes on Tuesday with plans to vote this week to restore funding to some of the shuttered agencies. And Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And late Monday, the IRS announced tax returns will be processed starting the end of the month. 
We caught up with U.S. Senator Steve Daines today in Helena. The Republican senator says he won't predict an end to the government shutdown, but he tells MTN it needs to end as soon as possible. This weekend, he wrote a letter to Acting Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt, to secure funds for National Park Services during the shutdown. He says Bernhardt told him Sunday that millions of dollars alone will now go toward national parks in Montana for critical services like trash removal and plowing. The senator says both sides must be willing to compromise to open the federal government back up, but he says increasing border security isn't an unreasonable request. Speaker Pelosi says it's zero. President Trump says five billion. They can meet somewhere in between there and get this sorted out. I was in business for 28 years. We've got to figure out a way to go forward here. We can open the government up, which we need to do, and fund the border security. Danes was in Helena speaking at the Montana Chamber of Commerce's Business Days Conference. Congressman Greg Gianforte also spoke. Now, tomorrow night, as we mentioned, President Trump will address what he calls a crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border, and we will carry that address live beginning at 7 p.m. here on Q2. A Montana case will appear on the United States Supreme Court docket tomorrow, one that could set a precedent for tribal hunting rights and the application of Indian treaties. The case is Clavin Herrera versus Wyoming, and it involves a member of the Crow tribe who took an elk in Wyoming and was later convicted of illegal hunting. Now, several years ago, Herrera pursued an elk across the reservation line into the state of Wyoming. Game wardens said Herrera violated state gaming laws. However, Herrera believes the Laramie Treaty of 1868 is on his side where tribal members have the right to hunt on unoccupied land. Now, in response, Wyoming said those treaty rights ended when Wyoming became a state. The Supreme Court takes up the hearing tomorrow, but may not reach a decision until late spring or early summer. A father and his daughter facing federal drug charges after a raid on their home in West Billings. Gregory Paul Green and Brittany Nicole Breen were arrested and are being charged with possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute and conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute methamphetamine. According to court documents, when agents went into the home on Westwood Drive, they found two rooms with drugs and drug paraphernalia. They concluded that a very large scale drug operation was being run from the home. Also found a computer in Gregory Green's room where the dark web was displayed and a screen showed that Green was selling Xanax bars to people across the country using Bitcoin as a currency for drug trade. Agents seized over 200 grams of suspected meth and several thousand Xanax bars and other items of evidence from the home, along with a large amount of drug paraphernalia and instructions for making drugs. Gregory and Brittany Green were taken to the Yellowstone County Detention Center. Turning to weather, we've gotten quite a bit of snow lately. How's our snowpack looking, Bob? Well, not as much as you'd think because the last time we talked about it, it was like 113% of normal, but now we're supposed to have more snow by now. Even though we've had a little bit of snow in the mountains, we're not doing as well as we'd like to do. We're at 92% in the upper Yellowstone Valley. You see 102% over there by Bozeman. Everyone else actually below 100% across much of Montana. So it's not doing as well as we'd like to. Meanwhile, in Wyoming, they're the ones that are getting all the snow over there by Yellowstone National Park. They're 153% of normal in some places. Uh, also, the Bighorn Basin, 125% of normal. Also, by Sheridan, uh, the Tongue Drainage Area, they're about 89% of normal. So actually, Wyoming only doing much better than Montana this year. So we're, well, it's at that time of year where we're supposed to have a little more snow up there. Of course, we're expecting an El Nino event. That means a little less snow and warmer temperatures. We'll see what happens for the rest of the year. We'll have more in the forecast in a few more minutes. Well, gas for under two bucks a gallon is popping up in Billings again, but experts say uh, likely not for too long. Prices fell seven and a half cents a gallon this last week, hitting an average of 228 in the Billings area on Sunday. The price at Costco Monday was 199, Sam's Club 194. Now that's according to GasBuddy.com. Oil industry analysts say prices below two dollars a gallon are becoming increasingly common nationwide, but say. That window for cheap gas will likely close by mid-February. Prices in Billings on Monday were 26 cents lower per gallon compared to a year ago and down 40.5 cents a gallon from a month ago. Take it when we can get it. Yes, we can. Coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, a Bozeman principal stepping down from his post after a diagnosis of a scary disease that most commonly affects children. Plus, we'll meet a baby boy, part miracle, part scientific mystery, and he's the only boy in the world with this condition. And in sports, a former player for the Billings Outlaws will reportedly become the new head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Scott will fill us in. 
You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.